Hello there YouTube, welcome to how to set up an oil painting palette along with oil paintings for sale. Since most of you are interested in how to set up an oil painting palette, I'm going to talk about exactly what palette I'm currently using and other palettes that I have as suggestions for you, depending on what skill level and experience you have. And it is the Zorn Limited Palette. So many of you may have already heard about this palette before. It basically consists of the primaries. So just your red, your yellow, and your blue. And in fact, most palettes are consisting of the primaries, no matter how many colors you have. Whether you have four colors or you have 20 something colors, you always wanna group your palette in terms of the primaries. So, the Zorn Limited palette is basically set up with red, yellow, blue. So, what you have for your blue, which most people wouldn't actually think of blue, is ivory black. So, ivory black is actually a blue. So, it's ivory black, it is cadmium red. Cadmium red is your primary red, and yellow ochre. So those are your primaries. And then obviously you have white, and in this case it is titanium white. So titanium white would be more for the beginner that's just getting into it. Um, later on there's more advanced colors that we'll talk about, but that's a pretty good beginning point. So whether you have, let's say that this is for someone that has less than a year of experience painting portraits. If you've got less than a year, and maybe less than like five portraits or whatever, less than ten or something, then the Zorn palette is a good place to start. It's not going to give you too many crazy colors like what you're seeing in this, and I'll talk more about that um, later on, but it will give you pretty much under normal lighting conditions like uh, natural light or incandescent light bulbs or something like that, it will get you pretty close to most skin tones. So the next palette, which would be one step up from this, would consist of two versions of each of the primaries. So you have ivory black and ultramarine blue. You have two reds. So you have alizarin crimson and cadmium red. And then you have two yellows. You have yellow ochre and you have cadmium yellow. So the inclusion of, and of course your white would be titanium white in this instance. So the inclusion of the cadmium yellow allows you to have a much brighter yellow that you can either keep very saturated or dilute. So make it very grayish, almost like a lead tin yellow. Uh, the inclusion of the alizarin crimson gives you the ability to now glaze very dark, deep reds. It also gives you the ability to make something red towards the blue without having to make it very orangey. The inclusion of the ultramarine blue enables you to cool down your skin tones without having to always use gray uh, that you would get from mixing black and white. So ultramarine blue allows you to mix with cadmium yellow gives you a really bright green. Ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson gives you really nice violet and that violet you can use for more complicated light scenarios beyond just natural light. You can have like a crazy um, fluorescent light on your model or something and there's a bright blue greenish color or whatever and that will do it. So remember it's just two blues, two reds, two yellows. So remember, however you set up your palette, think about it in terms of the primaries. And then there's of course secondaries and tertiary colors and, and more complicated things, which we'll talk about later. But, th but this will get you towards even more complicated painting. So beyond just painting skin tones, you're gonna be able, with this palette, you're gonna be able to paint uh, different kind of jackets or clothing, or obviously the, a dark hoodie like this, you could do with the Zorn palette. Uh, but, you know, you'll get close, not there, but close to being able to paint kind of like uh, uh, the, the type of colors that you see in that environment. It, it takes you towards that direction. 
So after this palette, there is another option. And that is the extended color palette. So the extended color palette goes beyond just two of each primary. You're going to have tertiary, secondary, or whatever. So a secondary color would be an orange. Uh, you'd have a green. You would have uh, a tertiary would be like a brown, which is a whole bunch, like say three different colors to give you a brown. Um, so, you know, having those extra colors, which I'm not going to go into detail of this palette. I will go into detail of my current palette, but this was the palette that I was using before I started uh, with the color palette that I have and I'm currently using today and I will continue to use. Um, so I should mention that the next thing to talk about in terms of laying out your colors on your palette is the arrangement of the colors on your palette. So more of a 19th century style uh, would be to start with white and then go with yellow and go all the way down to your darker colors. So that's more of a value-based organization of colors on your palette. So you start off with the lighter values closer to your thumb and then since you access, you use more light colors when you're mixing skin tones typically, uh, not always, but typically, uh, you will want it closer to your thumb because there's closer access to it and, and most painters, most realist painters that I've seen today use that kind of style where they use the lighter colors here and then darker colors there. I, I don't do that. I actually go through a color wheel so I'm going to show you what I have currently. And this is what we have here. So this is the palette that I am currently using. I also call this my forever palette because I hope to use this for as long as I can. Uh, and this consists again of the primaries, the secondaries, and that's it. There's not too many tertiary colors because I don't have too many brown colors. I got, I got one. Uh, but let's go along with the color wheel idea first. So this is more for the advanced painter. So the painter that's been doing uh, painting for, let's just say more than a year. Let's just say if you've been painting for under a year, then stick with the Zorn palette or the other option that I had. So if you're painting for under one year, then stick with the Zorn palette or the other option. If you're painting for more than one year and you've got, say, more than 10 portraits uh, in your, um, you've painted more than 10 portraits, then you want to start to expand. And the reason you want to use something like this, this is an extended palette, is because modern chemistry gives you the ability to do things that the old masters wish they could have done. So I'm sure that there's going to be some people that are like, die hard, limited palette, keep it 17th century, 16th century, or 18th century. Well, they had a lot of colors in the 18th century, but there's going to be some diehards that are going to say, stick with the 16th century. Um, sure, if that's what you want to, if you want to limit yourself, it's all good. Or you can use a more modern color palette with some classical adaptations to it, like what I'm doing. Uh, and, and this is the full color palette that you would want for something like this that has a lot more stuff. There's a lot of things going on in there, and it's it's more modern. It's also based on the Studio in Caminati style palette, so based on what Nelson Shanks, if you haven't heard of him, look him up. He is, I call him my superhero painter, Nelson Shanks. So it's not exactly the same color palette that he's using, but the idea is to go from the reds, the yellows, the greens, the blues, and then violet. So uh, what I have here is Burnt Sienna. Alizarin Permanent, which I interchange with Alizarin Crimson sometimes, but just Alizarin Permanent. Perylene Red, Cadmium Red, Orange Molybdate, which is basically Cadmium Scarlet, Cadmium Orange, Indian Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Chrome Yellow, which is basically just Cadmium Yellow. Uh, this is Cadmium Yellow Pale, Lead Tin Yellow, Cadmium Green, Viridian, Cerulean Blue, Cobalt Blue. This one is, the one next to Cobalt Blue is Thalo Turquoise. Then we have Ultramarine Blue, and then Dioxazine Purple, which is my violet. And for white, for the white that I use, uh, for the more advanced painter, Flake White, a lead white that would, uh, of course, add some toxicity to your painting, but as long as you keep the lead out of your mouth, 
out of your hands, you're good to go. So uh, lead white is not really part of this conversation, but that's something that you can use um, to step up from using titanium white. I'm not going to get into the specifics of that. If you want me to talk about that, then I can talk about that in another video similar to this. But that is it. That is my color palette. That is the arrangement of the color palette. That's how um, I have designed the layout on my palette. Another thing that I want to mention before we get to the sale that I have um, is that you want to, as painful as it can be to some uh, artists, you want to leave some paint on your palette. Um, just, I know, I know, trust me, I don't like to stain my palette. You can see that I keep the mixing, uh, mixing space really pristine. I try not to let stuff dry here. But on the edge, you actually want to let your paint dry. And I'm going to tell you why. It's, it's because it's muscle memory when you're painting, when you're mixing. Just knowing that the paint, that knowing the exact color is going to be at that exact spot is like muscle memory. It's like, it's like driving a car. You know exactly what the steering wheel is going to do. You know exactly where the brake and the gas and the clutch is if you drive a stick shift like I do. Uh, it's it's muscle memory. You want everything to be predictable. You want it to be at the same place all the time because this is unpredictable. Life is unpredictable. So you want that comfort on your palette and you want to have it based on the primaries, the secondaries, the tertiaries. You want it based on the color wheel so that there's a more logical way of mixing your color rather than just going like grays and browns and, and, and whatever. You, you want to have that kind of uh, control on your palette. So having said all of that, that concludes our little brief conversation on the arrangement of colors on the palette and now we're going to move into the second part of this video. Oh and that has to do with Rembrandt Master Studies. So uh, for those of you that have been following this YouTube channel for a long time, you may have seen a series of Rembrandt Master Studies that I've done. I've sold a couple of them already, but I still have seven of them available and I'm going to have them currently for sale for a limited time. So they are going to be for sale at a discounted price until this Friday, 24 hours to purchase this painting. Well, actually, I don't know if I can do math right. So two days is actually 48 hours, so you've got 48 hours. So you've got all of Thursday and you've got all of Friday to purchase one of these paintings. Um, of course, uh, the link to that is going to be on my uh, description box. So the description box of this video will have the information to my uh, Etsy shop. So that should summarize just about everything. And of course, if you want me to discuss any other topics or talk about something like lead white or mineral spirits or edges on, on paintings or something like that. I, I did read another comment actually uh, pertaining to edges, so maybe I'll talk about that one in the next video like this. But I want to upload more short videos where I'm talking to you directly and, um, and, and talking about subjects in, in painting that aren't just me doing a demonstration. So more, uh, I want to say, uh, concise conversation to answer the questions that you have in this kind of format. So if you have any uh, ideas for videos like this where I can answer the question very uh, quickly but also in a way that you may not predict, then please comment that in this video, share this video with other people. And of course this painting that I completed recently, uh, this painting took me I think about, I don't know, like eight weeks or something like that. Um, Let's just say it took between six to eight weeks to complete this one. It's a combination of painting from life, from photo reference, uh, and from imagination. Having said all of that, thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. I know it's short, it's more concise than the average kind of painting demonstration. I am going to do more painting demonstrations, whether they be the live stream format or the pre-recorded format. I will continue to do those, it's just um, I'm trying to mix things up a little bit, especially with this new year. So uh, 
Thanks again for watching. I hope that my videos are helping you out. Thank you so much. I wish you all the very best in all of your artwork. And don't forget, if you want to take your painting education with me further, please check out my online classes on patreon.com slash which is also listed in the description box of this video. Thanks again. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one.